Joining me is former Hereford United player Dave Morris. Dave, you were at the club for a season and a bit. You joined in February '93. Uh, Greg signed you from Bournemouth. You made your debut against Scarborough. Um, how did your signing for Hereford come about? Um, I was at, obviously I was at AFC Bournemouth for, under Tony Pulis at the time, and um, yeah, I think we'd maybe played Hereford or we had a connection there. But he just said that there was some interest from the club. And, um, you know, I just thought it was interesting. I mean, Hereford was a long way away. Um, so I decided to take the opportunity to go up there and meet Greg. And, um, you know, I played a, I think I, I think I might have played a, a reserve game for Hereford at the time. Um, played the game and was lucky and fortunate enough to score and do quite well. And funny enough, I was, you know, asked to play in the team, first team on the Saturday. So, yeah, it was quite exciting times for me at that, back then. Do you remember much about your debut? We played Scarborough, I lost 2-0. God, you know, all I can tell you is I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, Greg asked me to play wing-back. I mean, it's, for me, the most difficult position on the pitch in terms of the ground you've got to cover. And I, all I can remember of that day was a bit of a blur. It, it wasn't my league debut, but it was, you know... I was playing a lot of reserve team football at Bournemouth at the time, obviously. And, you know, I just don't, as fit as I was, I thought, or thought I was, I just don't think, you know, it was just a different level. And I think it just really, most of my memories of that game was a uh, tough going, if I'm really honest. That season we were in a relegation battle, but we pulled pulled away from the bottom place towards the end of the season. Um, but we played Halifax in the final game and Derek uh, scored the goal to relegate Halifax. What do you remember from that game and it being a, a packed out Shea Stadium? I, I mean, the atmosphere and everything for me, was, it's, I think it's difficult as a player, you know. You, obviously, I, you don't want to see anyone go out of the Football League, you know. It, it, it's something that I think all of us dread. But at the end of the day, we've got a job to do. You know, it's kind of a little bit better them than us. And I know that's probably not a very nice thing to say. But, yeah, the game the game was quite exciting at the time, you know, with the additional fans there and everything. And I remember at the end, they were saying, look, you know, or at half time, look, when that whistle goes, we need to get you guys off the pitch. And uh, obviously being the fullback at the time, I believe it was, um, I think I was one of the furthest away. So, yeah, it was, I think it was a bit of excitement for us, but a little bit of a, you know, you always feel for the other sets of fans and the other sets of players and management. Um, and that, that probably was the overriding factor on that day. The following season, we played Wimbledon in the League Cup. Um, what do you remember about the crazy gang like John Fashnew and Vinnie Jones? <laughs> that, do you know, the first, of all, first of all, I believe we, we beat Torquay down there, I think, to get, that, get in the draw. And, um, you know, you knew you, you had an opportunity to go and play a top premiership, what would be a premiership side now, a first division side then. I think all the guys, you know, you hope for the Man United um, of the world of football, Liverpool, these types of things. And we drew Wimbledon. And, it, you know, back then I was a bit of a physical player. And um, being in centre midfield against the likes of Vinnie Jones and then obviously they had Fashion up front, you know, it was... It was exciting for me, but it was also a bit of a... I knew I was going to be going into battle that day. And um, we put, uh, Do you remember there was a guy, Robbie Earl, who had, was, was getting a lot of attention at the time? And um, I was asked to do, in both games, asked to do a, a man marking job on him. And, you know, although the, the results didn't go our way, for me, it was really quite exciting to sort of test yourself against that level of players, you know, People like, say, Robbie Earl, who's scoring week after week at the time um, and getting a lot of attention and just to go and test yourself against that level of player. So, for me personally, I've got great memories of that, did even it make, though the results. Did it make you raise your game? Because that was it was a pretty big crowd at Edgar Street um, for that one. I think it was the biggest crowd of the season because most of the league games, we always were around 1,800, 2,000. But I think it was over four and a half that evening. Yeah, when, do you know whenever you play in front of a bigger crowd? I don't. I think even to this day, you know, anyone will tell you that when you walk out and there's that extra energy in the ground, I think it always lifts you. You know, whenever you're playing against top players, you know, across the time that I played football, I played with and against, you know, international players and some very good players, and you always find that extra yard, you know, that extra leap in your headers. And it, it, like I say, it's just testing yourself against the best, you know. Certainly from our perspective, playing in the third division, you know, what's now the second division, to go and play go and play a premiership side, 
I think there's always that extra buzz around the ground and it just lifts you, you know, and you just want to go and do yourself proud and do the fans proud and do the club proud. So great opportunity, great memories. Two weeks after Wimbledon, we played Walsall. It was a 3-3 draw. You scored the equaliser in injury time. <laughs> what can you recall from that goal? Oh, do you know, even you mentioning them words brings a smile to my face. I can absolutely assure you, my smile is ear to ear. It was the best moment of my footballing career. It was absolutely, for me, what I've always dreamed of now, you know, I think kids nowadays they probably think of themselves in a Chelsea shirt scoring a winner winner at Wembley, you know. But for me to go and score that equaliser, um, you know, a like, couple of minutes to go was just the best feeling. I just cannot explain it unless you you've experienced it yourself. I, I just don't think you could fully appreciate what was that, that what that was like. And you know, I, it was just a fantastic feeling and, and we had quite a few fans there that day um, you know and I think I can just remember running off to the fans and just seeing their faces and it was just the absolute best feeling and something that you know no one can take away from me you know so I'm probably going to I don't know go down the road and talk to my friends and reminisce a little bit more after this telephone conversation you also had a, you had a stint in goal as well when Alan Judge was sent off against Mansfield. We were three 0 down, and, and you went in goal. We we, we only lost three two. We, we we pulled it back. Um, had you played in goal before? No, I, you know I used to I used to join in training, and, and um, sometimes you know I'd go in goal with Judgey and and take the, you know shooting practice, like swap out with him just for a bit of fun. And it, it's one of them things it very rarely happens that the goalkeeper goes off and it it seemed that I was the automatic you know choice and it was really if only we could have got it back but I mean it was brilliant it was again it's a moment in football I mean how often does that happen that you manage to play a league game in goal and not concede you know so we nearly pulled it back I think Pikey scored did that scored that day or certainly had some chance to equalise and yeah, it was just another fantastic moment with all the fans singing England's number one, which I don't think ever materialised. No, it didn't. Um, but yeah, very good, very enjoyable experience. You left Hereford that summer. Are you still involved in football, mate? No, I got well to a degree. What I, do, I actually do, I mean, I've got a lot of friends over at Bournemouth still who have moved into sort of management positions, etc. And I, I've sort of gone into non non league football. I enjoy watching non league football. There's a local club down this way called Limington um, who play in the Wessex Premier and I, I just kind of enjoy going and watching them and helping up helping out around the club and you know football's been a big part of my life and you know I'd like it to remain so but I, I kind of enjoy watching a little bit more um, I seem to never have a bad game when I'm watching a game of football so yeah that's the kind of the route I've gone really. And do you still keep in contact with former colleagues from Hereford United? Funny enough, I just of late I seem to be doing that more than ever. I mean, uh, Max Nicholson, I, I've spoke to Owen Picard, Gareth Davies, uh, Derek Hall. You know, just to name a few. That again, it's just social media nowadays gives this gives us this great opportunity, and it's just been brilliant to talk to them. And we're going to all try and meet up at some stage. Living in different parts of the country or world doesn't quite make that always possible, but. Um, we've definitely talked about taking the opportunity to meet up, meet up as soon as possible.